This is a fairly brief and basic tutorial on building a flight plan in the a in Abris and entering the waypoints into the PVI 800. And this is for the uh, DCS World K50 Black Shark 2. And the main motivation out there is just to get a little, couple more tutorials and content out there for the Black Shark on YouTube. So. The main area I'm going to be focusing on is this area right here. Uh, this big monitor here is your Abra system, and down here, this keypad, is your PVI-800. Um, inherently, these two are not linked. Uh, when you first load into a mission, or any other online multiplayer game where they have waypoints or flight plans, uh, for example, this one already has a flight plan. This is just the random mission I've loaded. These waypoints will be linked together. Um, just in the mission editor, it will build these. So, if you're not planning on editing a flight plan, there's no reason to touch this. But let's say there are, there could be some situations where you want to build your own flight plan, or you want to divert to an airport that isn't in your already pre-built way airport airfield waypoints. So, one of the first things I always will do when I start. When I get to this first screen, after I boot up this this uh, Abris, is is I'll go to the options screen and set up, which is you know you just get there by clicking this first button here twice, and you'll get this little um, this little menu here, and you can cycle through these options by scrolling this little toggle majigger thingy. So you scroll it down to units, and the reason you're doing this is. The PVI-800, the waypoints in here, work on a decimal system. And these waypoints right now, before I change them, are, are I think it's minutes and seconds. I, they're not in decimal format. So basically to change these, you, you get to this menu, or the screen, and you click change. And as you can see, if I zoom in, this format has changed. There's an actual decimal here now, and it's a, it's a different format. And this is the format you need. So you're going to need to do that for just to enter any information, because otherwise you're going to get some fairly bogus information. Your waypoints aren't going to match up. So after I do that, I'll go to the menu, and let's say you want to create a fresh flight. Let's say you load into a game and you you don't want to follow their flight plan. You don't like it one bit, and you, and you want to build your own. So uh, on the menu screen, you click plan, and this, you know, you could edit the existing flight plan. You can scroll through here and, you know, edit this or review it, but let's say you just want to create, you want to start with a clean slate, and you don't want to have an existing waypoints to deal with. So you go to edit, all right, let's see, is it select? Yes, it's select, and then you scroll down to unload. So now it's blank. And let me let me get let me do this again real quick. Cause I, so on your menu screen, you click plan, and before there was that those waypoints here, and you click select, and you scroll down to unload. So now we have a clean slate. And basically, to enter a flight plan, it's pretty simple. You click on your draw tool here. So this is the second button. Click draw, and you'll see this little green thing here. And you can move it by scrolling your mouse wheel over. Um, this little twiddly thing here, and you can go up and down, and then if you click it, you can go side to side. So let's say I want to set a waypoint, and let's scale out a little bit. I think I'm starting crimson. So let's go to, uh, let's just go over here. Somewhere. Let's go down to this little city here. Okay. After I selected a location, you just click Add, and by default, it'll just um, name it a number and it'll increment it. Or you can name it by twisting this thing, but I just I'm just gonna leave it default and select Enter. So there it is. Um, then you can go back to your plan by clicking this one, and there it is. So here's our our very basic one waypoint flight. And here's our information for our waypoint. 
And what you'll notice is, if you go to menu and nav, you'll have your old flight plan loaded. So you didn't actually delete it from the database. If you want to load, to load your current flight plan, you actually have to go to menu, plan, and you'll have the flight plan that you have currently active. I mean, not active, but that, that you just created. And you just want to hit active here. And there you go, you've activated it. Um, so now if I were to go to my nav, or my map, and scale out, you'll see there's my single waypoint. So now, right now, my waypoints in this PVI 800 are set up for my old flight plan for the one, two, three waypoints. So like if I were to click this and go to waypoint one on my flight plan, these don't match. So this is 445065, 44562. As you can see, it concatenates the last digit here. And you want to keep that in mind so you can round um, because there is some rounding error. So, so now that we've um, changed it to decimal format, we can actually enter this data. And how you do that is you switch this from, when you start the helicopter, it's in off mode, and I just put it in operate mode to start with, but I'm gonna switch it to edit. And this is where you actually do, do all the work. So let's say I wanna make this waypoint one. And you can be waypoint one through six, you have six total waypoints, so waypoint one, and this shows you the information for the old waypoint. And then your next option you can do, or the next step is to select a minus, is this negative right here, or a positive. And this represents the hemisphere. So like, um, this is the western hemisphere, and this is the, ah, oh my gosh. This is the eastern hemisphere, the plus, and the western hemisphere, the minus. And the same for north and south. So plus is north, minus is south. So Georgia is in both the north and eastern hemispheres. So you're always going to be selecting the plus sign. So like, for example, let's say I click um, on those minus, you'll see the minus there. And if, if you do this and you put minus, and you put this waypoint information in, this will all be screwed up. You'll find some completely random area. So let me select waypoint one plus, now this is the north and east. This is your north, south, east, west. So right now it's, it's putting information to this north south field so you put four four five zero six five and concatenates the last one so i'll just round it to seven four four five zero seven then you can either to get to the next step you select a minus or a plus and it'll always be plus until they unless they add some more content and for the next point this waypoint is zero three seven zero three seven three nine Two, two. They can cancel the last one, so there you go. And once you have entered everything, this enter will light up. You just hit enter, and it's entered the information. Um, one other thing I'm going to do right now on the ground is select, let's say, a, an alternate airport. So airfield one will always be airfield one will always be your starting location. So this is actually my um, This is actually, this should be the current airfield I'm located. So let's say I want to create a, an alternate. So the way you do that, if you go to nav and you go to search, and you have the airport VR and B, uh, you can select multiple things here, but the most useful part is the airport. So you select that, you click search, and this will order these in dis by distance. So the next closest airfield is, is it, I'm not 100, actually I don't quote me on that by distance, but um, this will give you basically a list of airfields. And let's say I want to go to, make my alternate, um, don't ask me how to pronounce this, but um, this NOV airfield. So I can go to the info and get the information for that airfield. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here because it's a little hard to see. So uh, just so you can see the waypoint information. Actually, I did that a little prematurely. Select Edit, and then go back to this view. Okay. 
So now if I hit A for airfield one, that's my current, that's my default one. So let's say I want alternate airfield two. So if I click airfield two, and then I follow the same rules. I click plus, four, 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 zero, and then I do one, and then I click plus again, zero, three, seven, four, six, seven. And now, if I go back to operate, it's like the airfield one is still the old waypoint. But if I go two, it's now this four 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 zero zero four 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 zero zero three seven four six six three seven four six six. Oh, I put seven. It must have rounded it or something. But now let's fly to these waypoints. So I'm gonna leave this up. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to my nav screen. And you can see, here's my flight plan. So when I get in the air and activate my autopilot, I should fly to this waypoint. Uh, I think both my engines are on. Okay. All right. Make sure my... Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Radar altimeter. Okay. That's good enough for me. Do a hover just to get trimmed in a hover. There's a little lag. Okay, I'm trimmed. Okay, and I put my gear up and start heading in some random direction. up some speed. Okay, now let's get trimmed out here. And then activate autopilot. Okay. So altitude holds on. It's a little more throttle. Okay, one important thing to note with altitude hold, I'm just gonna pointed out. I'm not exactly sure 100% what the what this thing is, but there's this little lever here underneath the collective. So when I depress this, that will go up. And basically what that does is it sets your altitude. So basically when I did that, I set my altitude at 29. And I need to as you can see, if you go by your climb and descent, it's going to try to stay at 29. So if you're ever wanting to change altitude and you are trying and you have altitude hold on, so as you see, I'm going up a hill now, and my helicopter is adjusting to maintain that 29. It's not going to do it 100%, but it's going to try. Just, to, you know, just so you know, um, you're, you're, if you're trying to adjust it just by throttling, or just by putting in more collective in, and you're basically fighting it. So you, the only way to re readjust your altitude hold, which is this button right here, that bottom right autopilot button, is by either retrimming or doing the um, depressing this, which I think a default is the F key. So okay, anyways, so right now I'm not I'm not flying along the flight plan, plan. So I'm going to activate my route to mode. And I just did. And it's going to start turning. And I should line up with that flight plan. And hopefully I'm not going to fly into these power lines. And it looks like I do. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going I'm to press this. I'm going to increase my collective. I'm not touching anything except increasing my collective. And that's a good altitude. Let's say I want to hold uh, let's get my climb descent to zero, about zero. Let's say I hold 80. Okay, I just released it, as you can see. There it is. So now I'm in route two mode, set at 80. This is really good for um, if you want to do. Um, and I just realized I'm set on airfield one, so waypoint one. I should turn. Okay. Anyways, it's really good if you're doing um, 
let's say you are flying to a waypoint where there's enemies and you want to do a nap of earth technique which is basically um, you want to stay less than an altitude uh, like a hundred feet or you want to stay less than 15 feet so you don't get picked up by Sam's it's really helpful but anyways I, I've gone on a little bit of tangent here um, so as you can see I'm flying towards uh, that waypoint that I created so that's fine and dandy but let's test out the airport so what I'm gonna do first these aren't linked so I'm gonna go to my map now I'm gonna go back to search airport I'm gonna go down to knob novice whatever however you pronounce it and I'm gonna say two and that doesn't actually do anything it just visually shows a line from my location to the airfield now remember I created that wave airfield waypoint waypoint two so when I select airfield and I you know let's say we call this my alternate waypoint two I should turn towards uh, this this airfield now and as you can see I'm starting to turn towards it still have my old waypoint information in there actually it's saying when I selected two it created a start location so if I wanted to load my old flight plan I would probably have to go back to my plan and hit it active and it would redo it so yeah I'm flying towards this airfield and let's say and I still have my original airfield just to prove it to you, your original, your, the airport you take off from is usually waypoint one. So if I selected airport field one, which I just did, which is right here, this one, I should turn towards Krimsk. And this is just kind of a, just a basic tutorial on setting up a flight plan, very basic, and entering this data into your PPI 800. It's always, you know, it, it, it's, I think the greatest use is actually just being able to enter a, another air, just get to another airfield. You know, I've, there's been times where the mission is way far away from the original airfield and I need to land and refuel and rearm. So anyways, I hope you learned something from this and um, please let me know if, um, if there's anything I can do to improve any videos. Uh, I might release in the future. I can, I can already tell I probably am moving my head too much with this track car error. But um, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.